Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, to tell you about my friend's music record shop. Find them at 4191A Manchester Avenue in the heart of the Grove, right between the demo and the ready room. Uh, This Friday, they've got brand new records coming in from Sam Smith, Rush, All Them Witches, Ween, Daughter, Funkadelic, Little Dragon, Misfits, Danzig, Ice Cube, and a whole lot more. Uh, All purchases are 10% off. Free beer from Four Hands Brewery. Yeah, they'll have vinyl spinning and uh, all kinds of other things going on. They do a lot of in-store performances on Saturdays. Find all that information and more on their Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, musicrecordshop.com. Hey, this is Stephen Woolley, and you're listening to the Rock Paper Podcast. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from Arnold, Missouri, uh, hanging out with Stephen Woolley for episode 164. Woo! Yeah, welcome back, man. It's been almost, it's been like exactly a year. Yeah, almost, uh... Uh, I think that was like late January, so we're we're om- almost uh, to the year mark, almost exactly, and it's uh something like that. I was tr- I was listening back. Uh, it was on my time hop. Yeah. It, oh yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like it was like it was on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, that was episode forty four, uh, <laughs> and now one hundred and twenty later. So I'm, I'm back. Uh, I've been busy, man. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Business is good. Business is good. Um, yeah. Actually, it's been really good. Yeah. It's been really good. Um, shows like it's like this this year. Well, 2015 um, for me was just insane. Yeah. Uh, it was probably one of the best years I've seen in a long time. Um, when I first started doing this. In, I first started this in 2000 as a solo musician in 2000, let's say nine. Um, so 2009, solo musician. Um, that year was a good year. The next year was a fantastic year. And then it, we, we hit a slump, and it could have been any number of things. Like, I know um, we had a really rough winter that was like really long and cold. No one was going out. People weren't booking shows. Yeah. It was it was it was rough. It was a rough sure. year. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, there was even I had you know I had friends that were like like uh, we, they had no shows for like for a month, two months sometimes. Mm-hmm. And for guys like me that do this for a living, yeah, you know, um, t- I think I I did that January. I think I did like three shows, and I was just like, oh crap, yeah. yeah. But uh, um, but no, last year was just absolutely insane. Um, Two hundred and thirty-seven shows. Wow! Yeah. Uh, there's a guy I see uh, every now and then at shows um, in concerts, and I, I and every time I see him, he's got his uh, count for the year. Like this is my two uh, hundredth show I've gone to this year, and all this stuff, and and I, I'm like, shit, man, I'm not, I I you know I can't keep count. Like I, I go to a lot. I don't know how like. I'm sure uh, if it was my business, like it is for you, it's a little easier to to keep track. But like as a fan, like I'm go, I go to a lot of shows sometimes. Oh yeah, sometimes two, three a night. Yeah, two, yeah. I'll bounce. I'll hit one early. I'll catch a ten o'clock show and I'll end up at Oyster Bar or Beal and playing till two thirty down there. So, um, so I don't, you know, like I said, it's just funny to me that uh, every time I hear him, or every time I see him, he's got this count and and it, it just makes me laugh like. Just because I was like, there's no way I could keep count of how many shows I'm going to, and uh, but I, the number probably has dropped uh, of recent be it with uh, doing the podcast more. Uh, but it's also uh, I feel like these are almost like you know private show kind of thing. You know, well, yeah, I would say, and congratulations on the the success of the podcast. Yeah, well, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm having a great time. You've been getting some very, uh, some very kind words uh, in the on the social media side, and from all the uh, from all the musicians in the area and the artists that are just really digging what you're doing. 
and we do appreciate what you do. Yeah, uh, thank you, man. You give us uh, you give us an outlet. Uh, um, the last time that I did this, um, the last time I did the podcast, um, shoot, I mean, I had, uh, I, I mean, I seen a, uh, um, a, a, a big increase uh, in fans. Oh yeah. Um, people, uh, people going to the to the fan page, liking the fan page. Um, people coming up to me at shows saying, "Hey, I heard the podcast, this, that, and the other." Oh, wow. So uh, it definitely does help. Sure. So that that is uh, one thing. Uh, it's weird, very weird to me. Like, um, and I, I don't know. I've uh, I've kind of like heard from uh, other people. They have a similar thing with doing uh, podcasts and much much larger podcasts than than what I'm doing. But uh, like, so my wife works at a Michaels. And people come up to her, and and you know that she doesn't even know, you know they recognize her from Facebook, <laughs> from Facebook and stuff yeah. and whatnot, and they'll be like, "Oh, hey, you're Shane's wife, right? You know, like we were listening to podcasts, and, and she's like, oh, okay, cool, you know, and like, and then I'm I'm like, well, who was it? She goes, I don't know, they didn't say their name, and you know, so people are telling her and telling you and telling her, you know, other people that listen, but like I get very little, you know, interaction on the pages, the social. Uh, stuff with that, uh, you know, nobody's really saying, "Hey, that was a good one," or this was, you know. There's very little of that. Uh, there's there's a couple of people that do it uh, the most, you know, the the, the regulars. But uh, it is at least the people are, you know, at least people are talking about it. That's I think the, it's, it's kind of a fine line with that, um, especially if it's something that you know, like. Hey, this is this is you know, if you like this, then you like this. Yeah. You know the very the very cost comparison because if you're sitting there, if you're like, hey, if you like death metal, you'll hate this. Right. Um, so you know, so people aren't they're going to be more, you know, more apt to not tune into that particular broadcast. Yeah. So I I, I find it you know a lot of it it kind of depends on hey you know we got this picture of this you know this guy and he's singing or this that or the other. And they're like, oh well, I, you know, I like acoustic stuff, and and so they they tune in, and you know, other than just kind of out of sheer, you know, one of their buddies sharing it, this that or the other, um, but it's still, I mean, it still gets out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like I said, it is it is cool that people are listening and the people are sharing it and enjoying I said, it. Everyone, like I said, everybody, everybody was just you know, um, recently, like I said, I had seen. Um, you know, and like I said, you do, you, you, you're, you're always out at shows. I've never seen anybody go to the shows as many shows as what you go yeah. to, but you're always out at shows. You're always supporting. You're always every week, anybody who's got shows, you're listing all of our shows. Um, if anybody wants to know where any shows are in town, they can, you know, like, they like your fan page, Instagram, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they can see that they can see the list of shows for, the, the the day the week the the where they're at who's playing and it's great yeah because uh, there's sometimes like I'm, I'm not playing and I see that and I'm like oh man I'd like to go or if I am playing and I'm like oh man I'd like to go see that show because yeah, right. every time I look down I'm like and you do not only do you do the music but you like um, the 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 comedians the comedy stuff things like sure. that so. Um, yeah, there was uh, there was one night not too long ago. I think I put like thirty five shows up. Yeah, on a Friday or or Saturday night, and I was like, damn, that's a lot going on in town tonight. It's a good night, and uh, and it's difficult, you know, as a fan. There's like, you know, a lot of them I go to for sure. You know, there I share some that, uh, you know, just be supportive. I'm maybe not exactly my thing, but right. But I know just because it's not for me doesn't mean it's not for somebody else. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it's tough to. I hate those nights when I have to like pick between, you know, six, seven, you know, whatever right. good shows that I want to go see. And yeah, like where are they at? You yeah, know, sure. uh, oh, they're all in St. Charles. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah that's like um, I got done with a show here. It was a couple of weeks ago. Um, I got done with, early with a show um, at ten o'clock and race back. Because um, I knew Ewing was playing down at Scotty's, which is like right down oh, the road yeah. from where I live. Yeah. So I went and crashed his set and <laughs> showed up. And he goes, "You got a microphone?" I was like, "Of course I got a microphone." So <laughs> we 
we went out, and then so me and him finished the set together, so that was cool. Yeah, I saw some uh, picture uh, of or something of that. Like, on yes, the- yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Um, yeah, and which was great because Adam was there and Demarius was there, and and I, a lot of those guys. They I also play with them as well. Yeah, uh, and then Adam will be um, Adam Hansbro is a fantastic musician. Yeah. He's uh, a super talented guy. Super talented guy. One of uh, one of the nicest guys. Um, um, me and him have done many, many shows together, traveled miles, um, <laughs> going to the Lake of the Ozarks, playing shows up there. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, and then he, I, he's leaving for LA. Oh, yeah? So he'll be actually, um, real, like, mid, mid this month. Mm-hmm. Um, so he'll be leaving this month to go out to LA, so I wish him, uh, all the best out there. Yeah. And, Is that, uh... uh uh, has he got a job or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as I know, um, he's got some stuff lined up, and he's nice. Uh, you know, uh, just trying to. You know, uh, the guy is super talented, and he's yeah. more than capable of making it out. He's got some ridiculous chops, and sure. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, if even uh, even if he uh, just gets like a studio job, like I mean, there's a, those guys can make some. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You He's could, you could just uh, get him play on somebody's uh, record and stuff and uh, something like that even. But I mean, yeah, he's uh, yeah, very. I so he uh, him him and Steve played my one year anniversary party at Steve's Hot Dogs back right. back in June and uh, it was just uh, one super cool that Steve allowed me to to host. You know, was gracious to host the party. Um, but I brought in all this talent, and Steve's, you know, Steve's like, hey, I'll play. And I'm like, you know, one, I was like, you know, to have uh, Steve of the Urge to, on my first first show I ever put together. And to uh, have Steve on there was an absolute honor. And then to have Adam backing him up on guitar was just super cool, man. It was uh, That was a great day and a lot of fun to watch those guys. And uh, Steve even did, like, a, an acoustic version of a Liquor Store. For me, so that was a lot of fun to, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, but man, uh, it's just uh, I'm excited to see where where this is going. I'm hoping to uh, do something even bigger this year. I'm, I've already started thinking about what I want to do for second annual birthday party. So, oh no, they're great. Um, I just did. Um, uh, well, whenever I, I did my 1,000th show last year, no, or year before last. I did my 1,000th show, um, which was at the Dubliner. Yeah. Uh, which rest in peace. Uh, yeah. And uh, go out and see, <laughs> go out and see your local shows. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, we were at the, we did it at the Dubliner, and the place was packed and it was crazy and it was, you know, it was awesome. And so I, this year, I'm like, obviously, I'm not going to be doing 2,000, you mm. know. Um, but I hit like it was like twelve hundred and fifty or something like that plus shows between then and you know, and um, so I, I I did it back home, um, out towards uh, Sullivan Bourbon Cuba area, and um, it was fantastic, it's fantastic. I mean, it wasn't anywhere near like it wasn't a full band show. It was just an acoustic solo show. Um, um, the poor people that had the place that. That it, you know, I, there wasn't a venue really open for me to play at, and so um, when I finally found some place that agreed to it, um, because they're like, well, we really don't have live music, or when they do, it's not much of anything. Yeah. And uh, I kept telling them like, there's gonna be a lot of people. There's gonna be a lot of people, and um, they just they were overwhelmed <laughs> um, because it, was, it ended up being standing room only. Wasn't a huge place, but it ended up being standing room only. And then the, the people that were there, um, a lot of people from from back home, and, which was nice. And I, I I was glad that I got to do that. Yeah. Um, a lot of familiar faces, sure. uh, in, in the audience, and so. But like, I was literally, I was cramped up over in a corner. <laughs> You know, it, you know, had the, the the holding the guitar up and everything uh, <laughs> while I'm playing, and the, just people like. Hitting the microphone stand because yeah. there's just no, I mean, there's like it was, it was, there's no more room. I'm like, they were sitting people out in the foyer, and um, 
But uh, it was a good show. I mean, I had a lot of good shows. Uh, New Year's Eve was a fantastic show. Um, I did a, a, a full band show with The Groove, yeah. um, which was Steve Mooley and The Groove. Um, fantastic. Um, CJ Benz uh, on the bass. Um, um, Chad Jefferson on drums. Um, Kelvin, Elvin, uh, Kelvin Evans on saxophone. Um, good night. It was yeah. just a great night. And... The people that were there, like, most of the time, whenever you go play these, a lot of times people are looking for that, you're just a cover band, and that's it, and you're just doing your thing. We are different. You know, we do, we put on a show. Sure. And these people sat there, and they were so receptive, and I was so, I was so happy. Um, These people sat there, and not that they just weren't, just super attentive, and just one of the best audiences that I'd had, and it was just, to go out like on for the New Year's Eve that mm-hmm. it was that good that great of a show. Um a lot of people there, a lot of people had a great time, but like I said, and it was just um a lot of people just they they were just in, they didn't just enjoyed the show. And um so I was I was very happy with that. And so we got a lot more we're going to see a lot more of the 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 me and the groove doing yeah. some stuff together and a lot more. Um, cuz usually it's like it was like 80 20 and then it was like 75 25 um, this year, I'd like to do like 50-50, okay. somewhere around there. Well, you, uh, I saw a poster, uh, you were up in uh, Washington at the new uh, Driftwood. Driftwood, that's, that was where it was. That oh, was, that was a, New Year's? Mm-hmm, that okay. was New Year's. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, is that, uh, I haven't been up there yet, I check out Driftwood. It's fantastic, fantastic place. Yeah. It used to be the old dock house, and I'm dating myself right <laughs> now, um, but that was... Um, it, it's completely different. Um, it's got, they got great food. Um, 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 lots of room, bar up, um, the rooftop patio. Um, I, I just I, I go on and on. Sure. It's just it's just a it's a it's a cool venue. Yeah, it's a cool venue. I wish um, they you have you have. Another venue down the street, which I won't say the name of, but you have another venue down the street, and it seems to kind of like kind of draw like, and people just kind of stop there. They don't go any, they don't come down any farther. But I it just they, they they have they got they do the it's not just um, you know it's not just like a it's not just like a beer place and it's a nice place. Sure, it's a nice place. There's plenty of room. They do shot specials, drink specials, the whole nine yards. They always have great entertainment in there. I've seen the list. He's always and he's consistent, consistent with the entertainment. Um, yeah, uh, Jeremiah Johnson was up there a while. Jeremiah ago. was up there. So, yeah, there was a couple of St. Louis favorites uh, making making their way over there. Yeah, and a lot of locals. They have, yeah. there's a lot of local favorites out there. Uh, actually, Mountain Sprout's going to be out yeah, there. Yeah, I saw that on the calendar too. Yeah, that'd be uh, um, so that'll be interesting for sure. Uh, Mountain Sprout will be out there, and then um, uh, Math- uh, Matthias and the Pirates oh, yeah. played out there. Oh wow! It's another friend of the show. Sure, yeah, we uh, we just recorded uh, a little bit ago and. Uh, super cool. I, I, I really a real big fan of them. Um, love uh, her voice. I absolutely love her voice. Yeah. Miss, um, Miss Vision. Yes. Can Can Dasi? Um, love, love, love. Uh, yeah. All of them. Um, but yeah, no, they're it's it's a, it is it's a it's a good venue, and like I said, it really needs to get some. I, I would like to see it um, continue to succeed. It's succeeding. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see it continue. Um, like I said, we have. I'm not gonna go off on a tangent, but we have places closing up left and right. Sure. And some like like I've had some of the some of those fun nights that ran like what was it just last month last month the Dublin are closed. Yeah, I don't know. Six I weeks ago, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, the Dublin are closed. People can say what they want. Yes. After ten o'clock, the place turned into a third world country, but. I had some of the most fun times playing shows there. Yeah. And people showed up. But the thing it was is just like, you know, um, Wash Avenue, they've, they've done the whole trying to, you know, revive and revamp. And I don't know. I just, um, whether it has to, I don't know whether it has to do it with, with uh, Ballpark Village or anything like that. And I'm not coming against corporate whatever <laughs> uh, or the man or anything like that. But... Yeah. 
Um, you know, I'd just as soon play there too. Sure. But you're only going to get the same. You're going to the ballpark village is going to play the same bands yeah. over and over again. A hand they're going to give you a handful of bands they're going to play there that are on a roster of somebody's list. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, you look at a, a block from the ballpark, you got. Beal and you got Oyster Bar. Yeah, Beal, you got Oyster Bar. There's yeah, all kinds and, uh, of crazy. There's all kinds of crazy BBs. Good BBs. Yeah. Um, Oyster but, Bar's always got something cool sure. going on. Another but, one of my favorite places to play. But they're they're expanding. You know they're expanding. They're gonna be yeah. up in Grafton. Yeah, they're going to Wine Country. Right. Well, they uh, they're uh, uh, off their uh, Broadway uh, location is. Uh, they're get, uh, expanding there, and then they're opening a second. Well, yeah, second exactly. Yeah, they've actually gotten yeah, larger, right? There, um, and then, uh, but you know, so they're a, a block from Ballpark Village, and they're they're doing well. I mean, people are going to still. So I, I don't know if if it's uh, like, I mean, a lot I, is so, people got to kind of like people kind of got to step up their you know yeah um, you can all people are going to find the good music and they're going to find the good music yeah. and as long as they keep it consistent and that was the thing sure. is that. People got people got under uh, under the crunch, and instead of instead of us musicians working with our working with you know uh, uh, our our establishments yeah. and keeping keeping it going and keeping it uh, you know consistent, it fell off. And sure. they're like, oh, I thought you guys used to have live music here. And I'm like, well, we haven't had it for a while. Yeah, and then they go. All right. You know, and that's just like as soon as, as soon as they cut out live music, I'm I'm sorry, live music. Once they cut out live music, it's done. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I don't I don't uh, as a fan. I mean, as and a patron, I, I I don't know when the last time I went to Wash Ave was. You know, so like, and I go to a lot of shows. So um, I don't know. I haven't played a show. I I take that back. I take that back. I um I play at the, the Over Under Bar. Yeah, the over under bar on Washington is very they're they're very consistent. They always have an acoustic act of some sort. Yeah, uh, year round. Mm-hmm. Um, I bet mean, that's another place I've had some really good shows at. Um, I used to play down on the landing, uh, Morgan Street, Sundeckers, um, all those. You know, yeah. And it was you know it's, everything's all that's, that's done. Yeah, well, it seems like only the only thing down there really going. Uh, consistently is uh, Big Daddy's. They, they, uh, yeah, they play a lot on the weekends mostly. But uh, I know uh, um, Stephen Hunt plays down there, and uh, Steve Ewing plays down there every now and then. And uh, but yeah, well, uh, yeah, man, let's uh, let's give him something. <laughs> let's, to... get this, let's get this. Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> Let's enough, enough philosophical stuff. Give them something that they can hear here at one of your shows here. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's do. I'll do a little warm up here. So <clears throat> the old pipes running. Um, obviously, Emily wanted to hear um, some mayor stuff. So yeah. I'll do. She's got. Uh, she's got an obsession with them. An obsession. Yeah. He's pretty good though. I guess we gotta be obsessed. <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Do you think that you could be wrong? I swear you're right. Some people been known to do it all their lives You find yourself alone just like I found myself before When I found myself in pieces on the hotel floor Hard times help me see I'm a good man with a good heart Had a tough time, had a rough start but I finally learned to let it go Now I'm right here and I'm right now And I'm open, know somehow That my shadow days are over My shadow days are over now Well, 
Well, I ain't no troublemaker, and I never met her hard. But it doesn't mean I didn't make it hard to carry on. Well, it sucks to be honest, and it hurts to be real. But it's nice to make some love that I can finally feel. Hard times help me see I'm a good man with a good heart Had a rough time, had a tough start Do I finally learn to let it go Now I'm right here and I'm right now And I'm open, no somehow But my shadow days are over my shadow days are over now We're over now A good man with a good heart Had a tough time, had a rough start Now I finally learned to let it go I'm right here and I'm right now And I'm open, no somehow That my shadow days are over That my shadow days are over now Yeah! There. You're gonna get that eventually. <laughs> yeah, man. Sounded good. Thank you. Uh, That's a T. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we're in 2016 Gee, This now. is going to be a good year. You, uh, you still, uh, did you make a New Year's resolution at all? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not a big resolution guy. Yeah. Um, I was kind of, I was the way I was raised up. We just you just don't um, because it's just it's silly. Because sure. nine times out of ten, you just don't make a promise you're not going to keep. Yeah, you know. Um, but um, I will say I'm, it's some. Um, I'm excited for the new year. Um, very happy. Okay. Um, uh, my countenance, I guess, for the year is is very high. So um, a lot of stuff going on. Um, a lot of sh- a lot of new shows. Um, working, still working on the. I I will go back and say a lot of people have asked what happened to the last album. Oh, yeah. You know, um, it uh, as I was as I was going through, like I said, um, every time I write a song, I just wanted to pump it out. I wanted to put it out, 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 put it out. And I wasn't I, w- I wasn't putting out a final. Pro- I wasn't putting out a final product. And it really wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. And everything is ever going to be perfect. But it was definitely, it was definitely way too hastily um, started. And I got about halfway through and I'm just like, no, no, no. And I just start scrubbing everything, going back, redoing. And so now I'm taking my time with the project. Mm -hmm. Um... I would like to if it gets done this year, it gets done this year. I would love for it to get done this year. Yeah. Um, but I would like to take some time and that was the other thing too. I was so busy last year with the shows, doing so many shows and traveling and and with some other projects that I had been working with. Um, I didn't have time to really devote to giving it the attention it needed. Right. So this year this year I'm gonna take some time and give it the attention it needs. Because I really do, I do really do think the songs that I have are um, like "Lover a Little While" and things like that. Um, they're good songs, um, and I'm not patting myself on the back at all. <laughs> but I was just really surprised, um, especially as as I just came in, how I came about to you know they just kind of I was you know, I was blessed with these songs, you know. Sure. And uh, and there's some older songs like from the from um, the the Bear My Soul album. Uh, I would love to go back and revisit it as well, and then bring them in, do like the full band because uh, we do uh, pick me up. And if you've ever heard pick me up, that the original version, the um, 
uh, it's completely different. It sounds completely different from if you come to the show. Right. Uh, and, and, and check that out. Um, because we do, me and the saxophone player, we duel. Yeah. Um, I do like, uh, the, I have the harmonica and the, he, he plays and I play and he plays and I play and it's, it's, it's a really, it's a really cool thing. Um, everybody should check that out. Sure. Um, uh, shoot, I got, I got shows coming up with Ewing, um, Mr. Steve Ewing and the Urge, me and him have the Steve and Steven. Um, yes, we're just not that thoughtful when it comes to coming up with names. We're just like, so what's your name? Um, Steve and Steven. Um, well, there's a, there, I don't know, I've, no, I've never listened to it. There's a band, I think they're called like Shane and Shane or something like that. Or, I don't know. But I meant, you know, it's, so it's not like super well, crazy. Well, said it, it, it yeah. is. I mean, it's, it's like, he's Steve, I'm Steve. And yeah, that's, right. uh, you yeah. know, yeah, uh, and that's basically it. Sure. Um, but we're going to be doing, um, I'll, we're going to, at the last Friday of January, yeah, last Friday in January, uh, we're going to do, and it's, it's an acoustic show, and that was kind of the thing, is that I get to do the acoustic stuff, um, he gets to do the acoustic stuff. And we get to do our thing together, and our styles are are very similar, but not. Yeah. Um, like we both have a lot of the same influences, and then but we still have like there's a lot of things that like that he goes off on, like with the urge, and especially like with the acoustic urge tunes, which I love to play. Yeah. And and then I go off of my because I like. I like fun. I'll do like the fun pop type stuff and yeah. things of that. You know, um, I I turned I turned dueling banjos into the Violent Femmes. You know, yeah. so um, things that you know, just fun little things that make people laugh. And I love to entertain. And so by the time we we're, we kind of get that, Steve's a great showman. And so by the time we kind of mix the two together, it's, it's, it turns out to be a good show. Um, so the last Friday in January. Yeah. Which is the oh, I want to say uh, the twenty ninth, thirtieth, twenty ninth, yeah. Um, so will be a uh, an acoustic um, happy hour show at Mile two seventy seven. Um, it's another another great venue in St. Louis. Um, Mile two seventy seven. Um, we'll be doing that from five to eight. So we're doing the happy hour show, so if you guys are out and about beforehand, yeah. grabbing some cocktails or dinner, it's another good place to grab stuff like that. We'll be there. Yeah. And then uh, we have a big show. Oh. We have a big show coming up. Now, um, we've never done this before. Well, uh, we have and we haven't. <laughs> um... We kind of did it. Um, we kind of did it um, a few weeks back in December um, when I crashed his gig. Um, but we're going to do a Steve and Steven, but we're going to do it with a full band. Okay. And it's going to be um, St. Patrick's weekend. So it'll be March 18th, Friday, March 18th. So and everyone knows that I always do a huge St. Patrick's show. Um, cause it's, uh, everybody got woolly on St. Patrick's day. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, a, I always, I just do the huge St. Patrick show. Um, it's going to be a driftwood in Washington, Missouri. And it's going to be a really, 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 really good show. Yeah. Um, and especially out, me and Steve haven't been out that way for a while. Yeah. That and whenever we like a party. do, oh, it's going to be a party. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Last time we were, me and Steve were out there was, it was epic. Yeah. It was epic. I won't tell tales, but okay. it was epic. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. That sounds fun. Um, and uh, they can follow you on the, uh, you got the Facebook fan page. Yeah. Um, like we were talking, I had the, I probably still do, um, the website and yeah. it just like, if, as you know, the constant upkeep of yeah. that, plus the Facebook and the Twitter and the this and the that and the playing and booking and everything, I it was just like one more thing to, 
And I don't even know who even, if anyone even goes to it. Yeah, yeah, that's a uh, web and you know, Facebook's pretty much like the thing now. It's like a substitute for a lot of people's website. Yeah, you know, like uh, Reverb Nation. Sure, Reverb Nation. Usually, I, usually Reverb Nation and Facebook's a good place to. You yeah. can always you can always find out where I'm going to be on Facebook. Usually, yeah. um, not, oh, I don't ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I guess people... Uh, Just easy. Like Do it, it from but, the phone, boom, boom, Yeah, boom. sure. With, the, the, with Reverb, man, like, I don't know. It's hard to... The user-friendliness of it's uh, kinda, Yeah, it's 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 a little... Unless you're... Yeah. Unless you're sitting behind a lap... Unless you're at yeah. a laptop or a PC, it's not really... Right. It's a... Uh, the phone apps. I tried, really yeah, right. I try to play some songs from them every now and then, and it's like it just... can never get them to load on my phone and things like that, and it's like... I feel like uh, Bandcamp though, like they they've been uh, yeah, was, is, yeah. is, a, is a pretty good spot for a lot of bands to to put their music up, and you can they got a good player and everything, and so I uh, so yeah I don't know I mean they're they're, they're very uh, similar in a sense, but uh, but yeah they it's Reverb Nation's good for uh, you know like I said with the dates and stuff like that, they're good to have the calendar on there. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's like I said, just keeping up with the keeping up with the calendar. Sure. Um, it's definitely good. And the thing is, people need to realize that we don't, you know, if you like the page, if you're a fan, like it. Yeah. It's not going to, it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to kill anything. Sure. Yeah. If you don't want to, if you don't want to know when they're playing, unfollow it or, yeah. or whatever. But, um, but you know, like the page, I'm, I'm not, I get asked, so where are you playing tonight? Yeah. Where are you playing tonight? I probably get I don't know how many text messages or messages. Where are you playing tonight? Where are you playing tonight? Where are yeah. you playing tonight? Go to the fan page. It's right. Sure. It's right there. Just yeah. go to the fan page. And you tell have all you. your uh, events. You can RSVP to on. Yeah, there. And, I, and I invite everybody. Yeah, and of course you know like I got fifteen invites for <laughs> you know shows, and I'm like you should be happy because with those fifteen invites, that means I'm working. Yeah. So why well, is I've subscribed to you, so I get all the uh, alerts every time you. Uh, Post a new event, so I, I've been trying to keep up to date with you as best I can. I um, yeah, I try to make sure that everyone knows. I mean, sure. as, be- as best as I can. Um, uh, and that's kind of one of the other things too is that I play so much. Um, I don't yeah. know if sometimes that hurts or helps, um, but I play so much that people are like, well, I can catch them anytime. Yeah, but you, you but you never know. All right. Um. So every time you know. Every you know every time you know they they you, you put a show off put a show off put a show off, it's just one less person mm-hmm. not coming to a show. Yeah, and you know it just I don't I don't know how to. Yeah, well, if I can make it, I'm, I try to be there. Uh, oh no, I, yeah, yeah, I try to. Uh, but I I, I get what you're saying. T- I mean, uh, I I do that all the time. Like Stacy's always just like saying to me like. Oh, didn't you just go see them last month or what? You know, it's like, well, yeah, but you know, who knows? You know, who knows when the next time? You know, anything can happen. You know, right? So, uh, so it's like, I don't want to regret not go- taking the opportunity to go if I had the chance to. So, oh, I love, yeah, and that's you, why I, mean, I don't, I don't get to see a lot of shows um, simply because usually I'm always playing. Sure, um, but whatever I do, I mean, I like to. You know, like I like to make sure that I'm, you know, getting out there and seeing yeah. something. What uh, what was the last show you, you got to go see as a as a fan? Honestly, yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> as a fan, I guess. Um, Probably 2012. Yeah. Um, but I did perform with them, but um, I got to see The Urge. Yeah. At the pageant. Yeah. But I, you know. That's a hell of a show. That's all well, yeah, no, it was, I mean, it was a hell of a show, like I said, sure. but I got, at least I, you know, I got to do, um, they brought me out and I did uh, um, the Bob Marley. Um, uh, was it a. Uh... 
Three Little Birds or uh, no 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 um, which one uh, it's one it's um, together and feeling all oh yeah yeah <laughs> for a long time but we were at um, we were playing a show it was the first time that we ever played out in uh, the I won't say where we were at but it was out in the Franklin County area Okay. and it was the first time that we'd ever been out there doing a show together 500 people 500 plus there's a lot of people yeah in the middle and, the, and there's a fairly large stage. The stage is about five foot tall. People are up at the stage, come up, and we went on, was doing our thing. And we start singing One Love, and in the middle of One Love, these three chicks just start beating the brakes off this other one. <laughs> just, so in the middle of One Love, right. there's a fist fight. <laughs> and so, right in front of the stage... Couldn't help it. And they're just yeah. like, let's get together. And they're just pounding. Sure. And so, <laughs> so, a few weeks after that, um, I'm at another, I'm an establishment here in St. Louis. And I, they're not even open anymore. But, um, it was a nice little restaurant. And it was, um, <laughs> it was a anniversary. And the couple was there with some of their friends and the the wife was pregnant. I it was pregnant, and of course the they'd been celebrating, and the guy wanted to keep, you know, wanted to keep celebrating yeah. and send you know just said well why don't you just go home and I'm just gonna stay here with the guys and and it's obvious and it's their wedding anniversary. All right. And so obviously that didn't go over well. And so in the middle of one love again. She throws a fit, turns the table over, like, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. A week after that, and this is no lie, a week after that, I'm playing One Love again, 
But Frankie G's down and off Telegraph. And this woman and this man just start... They're at a table. And they, they show up. They sit down. They're listening to the music. I'm not kidding you. Halfway into One Love. These two start screaming and yelling at each other like... Nobody's business. Yeah. Um, throwing wedding bands. The whole nine... And I'm just like, I'm going to stop playing this. Yeah, right. So I like, I went for a long, I did, I really did. I was like, I went for a long time without playing that song. Because I was just like, all right, this is just too much of a coincidence. Sure. So. There was a, it's kind of a, uh, it didn't quite pan out exactly the same. But there was similar uh, solo uh, November, uh, went to see The Urge at the pageant. Right. And, uh. In the middle of One Love, a guy jumps up on the stage, and I, uh, you know, he's just mainly uh, rocking up. You know, he had his arms up, he's dancing, and st- and, uh, and then uh, I don't know how he even got past security because they're pretty good down they're there. They're pretty tight. Yeah, uh, but somehow he got you know jumped up on the over the fence and uh, got up on the stage and and uh, so, but I kept thinking like. How funny it would have been if like security would have like rushed him and like you know, you know like dragging this guy out and like whatever making a scene during one love you know it's like Steve's over here singing his beautiful song and, and this guy's getting you know the crap kicked out of him and stuff like uh, no one no one needs a soundtrack to get in their ass yeah beat. right yeah <laughs> but uh but they were all you know super cool he didn't make a you know they just walked him off stage and but uh, he. You know, I was I was waiting for him to like fight back or something like that. Try to, but he was just having a good time and inspired by the uh, Bob Marley and uh, and had to get up and dance. We were, I was playing a show at the Broadway Oyster Bar, and obviously out there on the patio, a car got pulled over right there on that side, yeah. and so there was the there was a car, and then the captain's car pulled up behind. And so while they're there, I start playing the Bad Boys. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Sure. And, um... What's that? uh, Inner Circle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um... (laughs) And so I'm playing it, and I I, I got the looper, and I'm doing all the... Tonight's episode of Cops. Yeah. And uh, I'm on the microphone and... Film live on location. Film yeah. live on location. Yeah. In front of the Oyster Bar. <laughs> tonight on Cops. And they can hear it. They can hear me inside. Yeah. I mean, plain as day, because they're 20 feet away. Sure. And they can't... They have to... And it, it, it Apparently, it was a serious stop. Like, yeah. it was a... You know, it was an offender... You know, the thing of it was, but they couldn't keep it, they couldn't keep composure, and they had to keep walking back, and, like, they were laughing, the the, the, the police officers were laughing, sure. so they had to keep going back to the, to the captain's vehicle, and <laughs> yeah. get the chuckles out, and then come back, and so, what's, yeah. uh, that's always good. Yeah. Um, uh, you got another one? I guess so. Sure. I was, I just, I just bang out a few, and then you can. Do you have? Do you have any requests? I looked. I didn't see anything. Yeah, we didn't. I had for Eli's coming, yeah. and that is the most horrible song. <laughs> do you know that? Do you know the song Eli's coming? I don't. I don't think Eli's so. coming, and this is for my aunt Sandy. My aunt Sandy always asked me to play <laughs> Eli's coming. It's by Three Dog Night, and yeah. it's the like the worst song ever. Right. I like I tried, you know how like I I can take a song and kind of do it my way, redo it, rehash it, and I'm just like it's just such a it's basically about this guy that's a womanizer. Eli's coming, lock your daughters up, and it's that's all it is. Yeah. And it's just like I don't I'm just like I hate the song. Yeah. So every time um, anytime there's ever any requests or anything, I always hear about okay. Eli's coming. So there's the inside sure. joke to that. If you're ever at any shows and you hear it, that's, hey, Eli's coming. Yeah. That's probably my aunt Sandy. So, so that's your, like that's like your Freebird then, huh? Totally my Freebird, which yeah. I totally get Freebird. <laughs> Freebird, my Freebird is Lady Gaga. Really? Yeah. Which sucks. Yeah. Um, because I had a guy drunk one night 
you know, everyone yells Free Bird, and then one night some guy's yelling Lady Gaga, and so I do Poker Face. Yeah. And so after that, I get Poker Face all the time. Well, it's died down, thank yeah. God, but, I mean, that was four years ago, whatever, you know, it was a big hit for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, uh, Denver Wade Trent does uh, Poker Face, but he, he, uh, he pu- uh, puts a lot of dirty words into it, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and it makes me laugh, and so that's a, that's how he does. That's what he does to to keep it fresh for him. Like he right. he put makes when obviously when the when the time is right and appropriate. But like uh, you know he'll he'll throw in a that lot of the old folks home. Yeah, or right. Yeah, church. Yeah, the, when the when the bar is uh, when everybody's getting you know sauce one thirty, yeah, one fifteen. He'll, he'll, uh, he'll throw in a bunch of dirty words in the song, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I heard. Uh, Stopped at the gas station on the way, and I heard on the radio a uh, whipping post from Almond Brothers. Oh. And I was wondering if you do any Almond Brothers. I, d- I don't. No. Yeah. I don't do any Almond Brothers. And it's just kind of... Yeah, I like the Almond Brothers. Right. They're just not really my... Wheelhouse, sure. I guess you could call yeah, they, it. Yeah, they wouldn't uh, exactly fit into your your uh, set list, uh, but you do a lot of. There's, I mean, that's the thing. It's what's fun about going to some of your shows. Like, like you said, you got violence. Oh yeah, you never know what. Sometimes yeah. I'll come, just kind of dig out. Sure. Because um, I've been doing this for so long, like, because um, people are like, well, what's some of the, you know, what's, what's some of your, what, what's your favorite song on play? Yeah. Like I have like a hundred million songs that are, you know that I love to play. I love to play all of them. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh man, I hate to play that song. Um, I don't know. Um, The <laughs> what's the I forget. There's no learning. Okay, yeah. Sometimes I gotta. <laughs> it's like right, you know. It's like uh, gotta get a little jump start there to. Well, you know what? Like sometimes I'll sit here and I'm just like, um, because I was totally thinking of another song before I started playing on that one. Yeah. And Cider's so like, like, I don't have the words. Um, <laughs> Cause that's not the song I was I was originally gonna play. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'll do that. Okay. All right. Now that I and scene. <laughs> All right. Two, three, four. Welcome to the There's no turning back Even while you sleep We will find you Acting on your best behavior Turn your back on Mother Nature Everybody wants to It's my only sound It's my only one Help with my desire How to make the most of freedom And for pleasure Nothing ever lasts forever Everybody wants to Find you holding hands, but the balls come to up and down. They do I'll be right behind you. So glad we get a break. So sad they had to fail. Everybody wants to.
like the newest one you've uh, learned that uh, you, do, um, uh, you stay pretty current with uh yeah I've been doing um someone uh what do they call um cause I get I get a lot of times people tell me and I don't get it maybe I do maybe I don't um a lot of times people sound like a certain person and um I guess um probably the uh I got um, someone told me I, I sound like Dave Matthews. Yeah. Which I don't think that at all. Someone told me I sounded like John Mayer, which I don't think that at all. <laughs> um, and then someone told me I was a better looking Ed Sheeran. Yeah. So I was like, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, did you, uh, there was, uh, uh, so what you said, you said Ed now. Uh, there was, uh, did you see the viral video that uh, with him a little while back where he, uh, it was like a radio station took him down to this little uh, like thing uh, room or whatever, and it was like a peep show thing um, with Ed Sheeran, and they set up like a sign on the you know saying hey uh, Ed, you know Ed Sheeran peep show or whatever, and they had a guy out there like hey you uh, you can pay a dollar you can come see Ed Sheeran in here right now kind of thing, and um, everybody's like weirded out, but you know it's like in New York City everybody's walking right by, they're like no, and a couple people. Finally, like I guess Ed's sitting in there for like two hours, apparently three hours or whatever. <laughs> nobody, nobody, <coughs> nobody walks in, and finally they get somebody brave enough to you know go in there and take a look. And they uh, the curtain opens up, and there's Ed just sitting on a stool with a guitar and goes into you know whatever uh, thinking out loud or something. Like, you know, plays a start playing a song, and then about a minute and a half in or something like that, the curtains close. It was just or. It was so. It was just. It was really it was a, a funny. Show. Yeah, it was really a funny little thing. But no, nobody thought. No one. No one. Yeah, no, nobody, one no one bit. Yeah, nobody uh, knew that. Uh, you know, thought uh, for sure. And so it was funny to watch their face light up when Ed's actually sitting right there. You know, five feet in front of their face, and they're like, "Oh my god!" You know. But uh, I, I definitely dig because um, a lot of it is he just like he's just like his style. I don't want to say his style, but yeah, I, very similar. Ish. Yeah. Well, I think I think the that, looping and whatnot sure. we do because we do, do a lot of the solo stuff. <coughs> so in order to um, kind of pull things off, very, um, he's very percussive with his playing, kind of like how I am sure. and things like that. I, I don't want to sit here and split hairs, but that's one of the reasons why I like him is sure. because I can relate. You know, I think the same thing goes to what Dave Matthews too for you. Like I think it's a similar playing. The, the, yeah. the acoustic guitar. Uh, yeah, and I mean, the yeah, the, the, the whole acoustic thing. And I yeah. love playing. Now, a lot of people don't, I, you know, I love to play electric. Yeah. Um, I love playing a Telecaster. And I love that bitey, twangy. And I'll, you know, I'll play the crap out of my Telecaster. Yeah. But I just, I love, I can, I can make, I can, I can just, I, I love to do, I just, I just love an acoustic. Sure. And so. There's a. Uh... What's that? Uh, uh, it's uh, Ed Sheeran, and it's like uh, <coughs> it's from that uh, soundtrack for. Um, uh, geez, hold on a second here. What the, oh, I see fire from the Hobbit. Do you know? Oh, you ever heard that one? I have heard that. Yeah, man, I love that's a that's a killer. That's tune. a killer tune. Yeah, and I've um, I respect it enough to leave it alone. Yeah, um, I love the way that just it continues. I mean, it's obviously difficult to do 
Uh, you could maybe with your looper, you might be able to pull it off. But the yeah. way the way that song builds, you know, it's like it starts off. Uh, he also has about a ten thousand dollar looper, yeah, custom looper right. that he has. Um, and I I wish I had access to those things. Yeah. Um, um, I seen his rig and it's very impressive. Sure. And I don't know who makes them. It's obvious, like I said, it's custom. Yeah, and it's touch screen and it's very cool. And I'm sitting there and I just I was like, that's very drool worthy. Yeah. So. Anybody knows where I can get my hands on one of those? <laughs> uh, yeah, that uh, that was another uh, newer one. I remember uh, I saw you in Nick's Pub not too long ago, and uh, you're a, you're a regular down there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be at Nick's this Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, I <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then, uh, but you did um, that uh, Uptown Funk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, that was a pretty um, good time. Do that. All right, here, here, here's a <coughs> here's a Sharon King for you. All right. If I can get rid of this frog in my throat. <laughs> Disappear. I told her I'm not really looking for another mistake. I called her a friend for some time to waste. And then I jumped right in a week later and turned. I reckon she was looking for a lover to burn. And so I gave her my time for two or three nights. And then I put it on pause until the moment was right. I went away for months on till the past crossed again. She told me she was never looking for a friend. Maybe you can meet me at my room around 10. Maybe they can let me in about a love gin. She said to the AM If you want to be in the shooter You said she said I'm out of the way with my love That heart is so cold It lays on my arm I really don't like it I'm out of the way with my love I told her she knows She gave a reload I don't really know that I'm out of the way For a couple weeks I'm we took away the days with the takeaway pizza Or a text message was the only way to reach her Now she's staying at my place and loves the way I treat her Singing out Aretha all over the track like a feature But she don't want to sleep, I guess, so I don't want to either But me and her, we make money the same ways Four cities, two planes the same day But there were shows that never been when it's about me May we we'll go together and just figure it out I'd rather put on a film or you will sit on the couch now Don't fuck with my love Crying on my shoulder, I already told you Trust and respect is what we do this for But I never intended to be next So you didn't have to take him to bed, of course And I never saw him as a threat Until you disappear with him to have sex, of course It's not like we were both on tour We were staying on the same fucking hotel floor And I wasn't looking for a promise or commitment But it was never just fun And I thought you were different Ooh, this time, God knows I'm singing Dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. I need 
a dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. I need a dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. And I share with you my story. If you share your dollar with my love, that heart is so cold. It lays on my arm. I really don't have to be my mouth. Don't with my love. I told the she knows to even be loved. I really know that I'm 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 sure you've seen that video too, haven't you? Where like the like seven country songs that are that, that they like <laughs> yeah. splice up and they're, they're, yeah, they all mix together. Yeah, it's like it basically basically any song from uh, basically any song from the nineties. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they all go uh, G D E minor C. Yeah. Um, Said I don't know if I've ever been good enough. I'm a little bit. Rusty and I think my head is caving in Looking around the house Heading behind the window and the door Searching for signs of life But there's nobody home yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're all they're all the same. Yeah. Uh, well, not all, but this, sure. that's definitely the the C ninth was the definitely the quarter of the nineties. Yeah, but. it's uh, it's it's uh, <laughs> it, that stuff kind of gets me. Like you know, like it being having a listening to a ton of music and stuff, and I hear something, and I'm like, eh, there's something in there. I don't know exactly. With the you know the guitar pattern or whatever something in there. Oh, that's it's definitely like, yeah. something that sounds the same. Right. It's like you were talking about like like uptown funk. Yeah. Which I <coughs> like. I love the. And whenever they started doing that, I was just like, that boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Boom. And all I can picture, like in my head. As soon as I heard that, was more stay in the time. Sure. And one of my all time favorite bands, I love Prince, love more stay in the time, Purple Rain, the whole, the whole bit, yeah. love it. And so as soon as I heard that, this hit that ice cold Michelle five of that white door.
<clears throat> I was listening to Stern a little bit ago, and he had uh, uh, Don Henley on. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, and Henley was saying, uh, you know, they would uh, they would be in the studio and writing all these uh, songs and stuff, and and they uh, they would invite girls in to come hang out, and uh, they knew they had a hit on their hands whenever the girls would start dancing. Like they uh, right. So like he was talking about like uh, I think uh, Stern played uh, like Dirty Laundry, and he you know that's when he was kind of telling that story. So it's like. I imagine uh, when you start doing Uptown Funk, all the girls hit the hit the dance floor. And... They do. They um. They do. I um definitely is part of my 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 catalyst or my whatever you want to call it formula yeah. is um, definitely um, playing things that are appealing to the opposite sex. <laughs> I mean, I think that's pretty much. Uh... Pretty much everybody's goal when they start playing music. No, it's not. Well, I mean, well, no, no. I don't mean. I don't mean it like that. I yeah. meant like, as far as keeping people happy. Sure. Um, if you keep girls on the dance floor, as long as the girls stay there, the guys will stay there. Oh yeah. Because you guys, if you got a bunch of guys there and they're coming up and they're like, you play Tool, <laughs> or yeah, you know, and I was like, I know the piece. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, Can you play Schism? <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, you always got some jerk that comes out, and I don't. I don't mean it like that. I shouldn't say yeah. it like that. But you always get some. You always have an, a very um, enthusiastic fan <laughs> that comes up, and they're just like, "You play any Toto?" Yeah. Like, and you're like, "You're 22. You don't know yeah. who Toto is." Toto. And they want to hear, you know, "Rains in Africa." Yeah. And which, if you can pull "Rains in Africa" off, <laughs> more power to you. Right. This guy doesn't. Um, I've tried. It yeah. just says it's not right. Sure. It's just horrible. It's, it's it sounds like it's more of a flood. <laughs> well, um, if you get them up dancing, and then they get they get thirsty, and they keep. Yeah, that's drinks, the thing. So. I say, yeah, as long as they're as long as they're dancing, and they're thirsty, and like I said, um, that's kind of the it's kind of always been our thing, especially like whenever I play with the groove. Yeah. Um, you know, we kind of like I always hated the Steam Woolly Band. Cause it's not the Steve Mooley band. It's a very, it's very much a collective effort. Um, yeah. But uh, at that same point in time, it's easier to identify me. So like having the guys. Um, so we finally, we finally have solidified this. It is Steve Mooley in the groove. Right. Um, so I mean, and they definitely, it's just very talented, talented uh, gentlemen. Sure. Um, absolutely. Uh, and of course, um, we have multiple bass players, CJ, and and um, and, the, and multiple drummers, Marty and CJ and John, and and uh, we have you know guests that come in and that's uh, uh, Big Mike Aguirre uh, does uh, Blue City All Stars and and right. and, and that's kind of uh, what's cool about him doing that, like how he does, like with the All Stars kind of thing, is like he's got a different backing band like all the time. Right. Yeah, there's so a lot of guys come and go, and that's I don't know. It's fun to like because you you know also keeps it fresh. Like, it's, oh yeah, they're totally every every single guy. No one is like no one is better than the other one. Yeah. It was just different, right? And I know I know how it's gonna be. Like if I put this guy and this guy, yeah. I put this player and this drummer and this. I know what it's gonna sound like. Sure. And if I swap it up, you know this that, or that. I always I know exactly what it would be like. Yeah, and so I kind of I kind of do cherry pick from time to time, mm-hmm. like if I know the the venue, and I know what it, the you know what it's going to be like, I'll be like, okay, I want him, I want him doing this and him doing that. Right. So, um, That's cool. so yeah, it's it's great. I absolutely love it. Um, I love being the boss. Yeah. Um, like I, I don't know, I, bands are bands are so because it's a democracy and it's a. Sure. Like one of my favorite bands of all time from the St. Louis area, um, Good Time Engineers. Oh, awesome band. Yeah. Um, you know, and then they put out this. I put out a. I think it was a two disc. It was a two disc album and a DVD. I mean, that was their first. That was their. That was their freshman release. Yeah. It was a two disc. It was a two disc CD and DVD, and. And then, they, and then they broke up. Yeah. So I just like I don't know. Um, I like doing this because I can, 
I call the shots. There's no, there's no animosity. There's no nothing. We all get along. We're like brothers. Yeah. And it's it's really fun. It really sure. is. You know, I can even like I have Demarius. Sometimes Demarius will play for me. Adam will play for me. Things like that. You know, it just depends on what I'm, what I'm kind of going for. Yeah. And I we have enough people. Um, out there, you know, uh, there's stable musicians in St. Louis that are just ridiculously talented. So, yeah. um, I'm never short of talent to, to to come help me shine because they yeah. definitely do that. They help me shine. So. Yeah, man. Um, well, uh, I guess we'll uh, wrap this thing up. Uh, so we got again uh, closing out the month. Uh, last uh, the 29th. At uh, 29th at Mile 277, I'll be with Steve Ewing, yeah. and uh, that's from 5 to 8. Um, you can catch me at Nick's Pub um, every second Thursday and every third Saturday of the month. We've kind of got that thing going on now. Okay. Um, you can catch me at the Oyster Bar every second Tuesday of the month. And then revolving, um, you can find me at uh, Bar Louie in St. Charles, Bar Louie in Chesterfield, Anytime, usually on Thursday nights um, throughout the month, you know, uh, check out Facebook to let you know when. Yeah. Um, Driftwood will be back uh, March 18th. That'll be the Steve and Steven full band, St. Patrick's Extravaganza, yeah. Deluxe. Um, that should be a ridiculously great show. Um, and I'll be back at Driftwood again April 8th with the groove doing our thing. And then um, lots of lots of shows. I'm excited. We'll be back down at the lake. Um, if you guys ever make it down Lake of the Ozarks, yeah. um, you can catch me at uh, Shorty Pants Lounge or Dog Days or Wobbly Boots Roadhouse. All three of those establishments are very, 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 very um, music-friendly, family-friendly Fun friendly. I mean, I don't know how dog friendly. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, great establishments. I can't wait to get back. To, I like literally cannot wait to get back down to the lake. Yeah, man. Um, cause it, I, it's 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 cold, and I just <laughs> right. wanna, yeah, I'm gonna get back on a dock somewhere. Sure. <laughs> but uh, other than that, um, I don't foresee anything. Gonna you know, definitely be working on the album this year. Um, I'm not putting any. T- I'm not putting any deadline on it. Just when it gets done, it gets done. Yeah. Um, man, there's all kinds. Of, there's something else. I'm sure I'm forgetting, but yeah. Sure. Well, you can find it all. I'm sure uh, on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Uh, Stephen Woolley. Call me up. Yeah. <laughs> See me at a show. Come talk to me. Sure, man. Yeah. Uh, well, man, this has been a ton of fun. I appreciate you, uh, you know, coming back and, uh, doing the show again and, uh, yeah, no problem. And, uh, playing some songs for us, man. That was, that sounded really good. And I, uh, I gotta get back out there and see you again. And I'll, uh, I'm thumbs upping right now. You guys can't <laughs> yeah. see it, but I'm, uh, marking my calendar today, though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out to that St. Patty's Day. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah. Um, you come out, they'll have the the I got I got Wooly on St. Patrick's Day T-shirts, which is the annual. I got and I'll I'll post them up. I'll I'll send them over to you. But we'll have the I got Wooly on, um, which is I'll play off the the, the get Wooly T-shirts. But I got Wooly on St. Patrick's Day, and um, I always do. Like I said, I love St. Patrick's Day. I'm not even close to even being Irish at all. <laughs> Um, but I love St. Patrick's Day. I love the I love the I love the uh, I love the music for like a whole day. Um, I can I can the, the the music and the and the revelry and the whole I can I can I just absolutely love it. And it's sure. one of my uh, one of my f- favorite uh, nonconformist holidays. I guess you really <laughs> want to call it. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a yeah. So it's, yeah. Really, it's just like it's it's my it's my, uh, like, I don't know, everyone loves Mardi Gras. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, St. Patrick's is more, is more my, is more my speed, yeah. so. The parades and the dancing and the tradition, a lot of, lot of tradition, I like sure. that. I don't have any traditions, so I guess is that's the fact that I, that's why I like it so much, is yeah. that they have all these, these great, you know, the dancing <laughs> right. and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so. But all right, yeah. but yeah, so. 
uh, March 18th, big, huge, um, big, huge show. I'll be doing my stuff. Steve will be doing his stuff. We'll be doing our stuff together. Full band, T-shirts. I'm sure there'll be T-shirts, CDs, things like that. Um, I'm going to do a re-release of Bear My Soul uh, for early this summer. Um, so maybe I'll have some out before then or ready for the show. Okay. Um, which that's a cool. Did, did I ever give you one of those? Did yep. you ever get one of those? I have to get the one you want. Yeah. Um, Bear My Soul was like a, an original five song EP type thing, but it has a bonus. Uh, it has a bonus uh, hidden fourteen tracks. Oops. Yeah. It's got a bonus hidden fourteen tracks. They're, it's they were all recorded live at the at the uh, the one theater in um, uh, oh shoot. Quincy, Illinois, uh, which I don't even think they're not even there anymore. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of a it was a fun it was a fun night and it was uh so and it was a lot of like off the hip live recording looping songwriting. I think I even I think I was like I even wrote a couple songs like while I was on stage <laughs> just improving and yeah. and uh, so yeah it was a good night nice. but. Uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> and it's a lot. Of, a lot of the songs were it, it were songs that a lot of people had that asked to hear. So a lot of there'll be covers that people would ask a to of, hear. A lot of Eli's coming. A lot of Eli's coming. <laughs> like love, love Eli's coming. And you see, he's never gonna let me live that down. Yeah. So, uh, all right, man. Appreciate well, it, brother. Yeah, thank you. Uh, come see Stephen live, and uh, tell him uh, you heard him on the Rock Paper Podcast. Woo. All right, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs>